In this lesson, we'll learn how to derive the empirical formula from the mass percent of each element in a sample. This process is called elemental analysis. Recall from section 2.6 that there are two formulas for molecular compounds. The molecular formula shows how many of each atom are in a molecule. The empirical formula is the molecular formula divided by the lowest common denominator. Since the empirical formula can't even tell us how many atoms are in a molecule, you might wonder why we have an empirical formula at all. The word empirical means from observation or experiment. There is a technique called elemental analysis, which will tell us the mass percent of each element in a compound. We can use this mass percent to calculate the empirical formula. Chemists have been doing this sort of analysis long before we had any idea what a molecule was. Also, some compounds don't form molecules. This includes ionic compounds like magnesium oxide, as well as amorphous solids like glass and quartz. These compounds can't have molecular formulas. They can only have an empirical formula. Here is a simplified elemental analysis problem. You were given the moles of each element in a sample of a compound. See if you can figure out the empirical formula of the compound before I go over it on the next slide. To solve this problem, we use the moles of each element to write a preliminary empirical formula. Then we divide each number in the formula by the smallest number in the formula, which is 0.14. This gives us a new formula, which is composed of much nicer numbers. However, they're not all whole numbers yet. So we need to multiply this formula by two to get these nice whole numbers. This gives us the empirical formula of three zinc atoms, two phosphorus atoms, and eight oxygen atoms. The harder form of an elemental analysis problem is when elemental masses are given. However, there's a single extra step converting each mass into moles of that element. Try it out on this practice problem. To solve this problem, first convert the mass of each element into moles of that element. This gives us the preliminary formula shown to the right. The smallest number in this formula is 0.123. If we divide all the values in the formula by 0 0.123, we get the empirical formula NaClO4. Now, the second part of this question asks what the name of that compound is. Na is sodium. ClO4 minus is perchlorate. So this is sodium perchlorate. Lastly, sometimes an elemental analysis problem will give us the percent mass for each element in a compound. When this happens, we need to convert the mass percent into actual masses. One strategy is to assume you have a 100 gram sample, in which case for this problem, you would have 38.7 grams of carbon, 9.7 grams of hydrogen, and 51.6 grams of oxygen. However, for this specific problem, there's an easier way. Because we know the molar mass of the compound, I think we should assume that we have a 62.1 gram sample. This way, when we calculate the moles of each element in a 62.1 gram sample, we will also be calculating the moles of each element in one mole of the compound, which is the same as the molecular formula. Here's how to solve it. We are looking for the molecular formula, which is the number of atoms of each element in one molecule of the compound. It's also the number of moles of each element in one mole of this compound. So our goal is to find moles of carbon per mole of ethylene glycol, moles of hydrogen per mole of ethylene glycol, and moles of oxygen per mole of ethylene glycol. I've written these three units to the far right on the slide. Watch what happens when we multiply the mass fraction in orange by the molar mass in purple we'll get grams of carbon per mole of ethylene glycol. We only need to add one more conversion factor, the molar mass of carbon in black, to get the number of moles of carbon in one mole of ethylene glycol. If you don't believe me, try crossing out the units here. 
Apply this same treatment to hydrogen and oxygen and you'll get your answer, C2H6O2.